Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential logarithmic equation. We have x to the power 1 over log x equals 10 to the power x. And we're going to try to find the x values that satisfy this equation. We've done similar problems before. I don't think I've done this exact same one. If I did, please let me know. Sometimes that happens too. Anyways, so we have x to the power 1 over log x, log x being base 10, equals 10 to the power x. So base-wise, base we're good. We have the same base on both sides if you uh, don't include the x. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. I'm also going to show you a graph which kind of explains uh, what is going on. Okay, so you should always be familiar with expressions like this. Uh, the non-standard sort of, uh, you know, there are some trivial questions with logs. Like I could give you a problem like log x plus 1 equals 3. This would be super duper straightforward. This is a little different. It's a little more challenging. So for, those, for these kinds of questions, you should be familiar with two types of structure. One of them is x to the power log x. The other one is x to the power 1 over log x, and obviously they are very different. But substitution plays an important role in the solution of these problems. So for my first method, I'm going to use substitution, and if you've been a long time viewer, you should know that it's one of my favorite methods. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's replace log x with something. How about y? And substitution here could be done in different ways. We could call log x equals y. But if you want, you can also call 1 over log x equals y, which means log x is equal to 1 over y, and just go from there. Make sense? Okay. Let's just go with this one for now. And maybe if you have some time, if the video isn't too long, then we could also explore the 1 over log x option. Okay. So if log x is equal to y, first of all, the first thing you do if you are using substitution always convert your equation to another form. Meaning that if you have a log equation, make it exponential. If you have an exponential equation, make it logarithmic. In this case, the base is 10, even though it's not written. This means 10 to the power y equals x, or x equals 10 to the power y. So this is going to be kind of like your formula for x, and you're gonna replace x with that, in other words. So we have an x here, and we have an x there. Make sense? Let's go ahead and do it. Replace x with 10 to the power y. And then 1 over log x is just going to be 1 over y because you replace log x with y, not 1 over log x. We're going to do that next, hopefully. And this equals 10 to the power x, which is 10 to the power, 10 to the power y. So kind of like a tower, sort of. A uh, power tower. Okay, what do we know about multiplication of exponents? So if you have a to the power m to the power n, this is a to the power mn. So we multiply these exponents, and that's what we're going to do here. But y times 1 over y is equal to 1. There are reciprocals. They just cancel out. So we end up with a 10 here. And on the right-hand side, we have 10 to the power, 10 to the power y. Let's write what's on the right-hand side on the left-hand side. So 10 to the power, 10 to the power y equals 10. And this means that if the bases are equal, the exponents are also equal. So, 10 to the power y must equal 1. An unwritten base, but it's understood. 10 to the power y equals 1. Great. So that should be fairly straightforward, right? If you have a to the b equals a to the c, then b equals c. And of course, if a and b, a is 1 or negative 1, that's a different story. We're just saying a does not equal 0, a does not equal 1, a does not equal negative 1. Under those conditions, this is always true, right? Well for real numbers. For complex numbers, it's a whole different story. But anyways, 10 to the power y equals 1 gives us y equals 0 because 10 to the power 0 is 1. And if you're looking for complex solutions, that would be another interesting um, thing to look at. Uh, are there any complex solutions to this equation? Anyways, y equals 0 implies what? y is what? log x. So if y is 0, that means log x is 0, back substitute, and this indicates that x is 1, because log 1 is always 0, right? Great, so x equals 1, looks good, but there's a, there's a but about it, and that is, we should always, always check with 
logarithmic equations, radical equations, when you square both sides, you should always make sure that there are no extraneous solutions. Sometimes they'll creep in. So, in this case, we have x to the power of 1 over log x. So, if x is equal to 1, and you could also tell by this, log x equals 0 is problematic. So, if x is 1, then log x is 0, which means 1 over log x is undefined. Unfortunately, you can't divide by 0, no matter what other people say, never ever divide by 0. So, we have a problem, Houston. What is that? The only solution fails, which means we don't have any real solutions to this equation. And that's for real. Are there any complex solutions? Something to think about, please comment down below. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and then after that, I'll show you the graph. And maybe I can squeeze in the 1B method into this, but I want to do the second method first, so let's see. So my second method is going to involve a different method, but this is a very common method for these kinds of equations. If you have variables in the exponent, you should always log both sides. Why? Because it helps you solve the problem. So we're going to log both sides. Log, and we're going to use base 10. It makes sense, right? We have a lot of um, base 10 here. And then this guy here is an exponent, so it's going to be moved to the front. We're going to get 1 over log x multiplied by log x equals x times log 10. But log 10 is base 10, so that should be 1. I don't have to worry about it because it's being multiplied. Be careful, because if it's being added, like in another scenario, you can't just cross it out because it's not 0, it's 1. So this should turn into x plus 1. Make sense? So you got to be very careful with your operations. Log x cancels out as long as log x does not equal 0. And from here we get x equals 1. But that implies log x is equal to 0, so we couldn't cancel out in the first place. Well, even if you do, this solution is not going to count. Wow. We only got one solution, and that didn't work. No good, right? But that, that's what happens sometimes. So let's go ahead and explore 1b real quick. So I was saying that instead of calling the log x y, you can call 1 over log x something. How about calling this t? And 1 over log x equals t implies log x equals 1 over t, and x equals 10 to the power 1 over t. Now go ahead and do the replacement. 10 to the power 1 over t to the power t equals 10 to the power 10 to the power 1 over t. They cancel out again. We get this number equals 1. But that means 1 over t is 0. Actually, this is like a more interesting case because 1 over t can never be 0. What's the reciprocal of 0? What, or the reciprocal of which number is 0? That number does not exist. Therefore, we don't have any solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. And what does the graph tell you? The graph tells you that, hey, this is actually a horizontal line, or should I say line segment? Yes. It has a line segment. It's a line segment. And actually, maybe it's a ray, right? Because it doesn't have, a, it only has one endpoint. So we could call this a ray, I guess. It's a ray. And uh, it has two open dots on it because log x is only defined for positive numbers and x cannot be 1 for obvious reasons. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.